going to be looking at acids and bases. First of all, we're going to have a look at water. Although water is a covalent substance, it can conduct electricity. This is because water dissociates into ions very slightly, as can be seen in this equation here. The double-headed arrow means that this is a reversible reaction, which lies mainly to the left here, where most of the water is in the form of molecules. We can show this using full structural formula. So one of the bonds between the H and the O breaks to form hydrogen ions or protons and hydroxide ions. It is the presence of these small amounts of ions that means that water can conduct electricity. Having a look here at the pH chart, which you should be familiar with, it runs from just below 1 to just above 14, uh, but we usually just look at the 1 to 14 part of the pH chart. The colours shown here are those for universal indicator. Below pH 7, so pH 1 to 6, we have acids. At pH 7, it is neutral. And above pH 7, we have alkalis. Acids have more H plus ions than water. At the point of it being neutral, we have equal numbers of H plus and OH minus ions. So although water dissociates into H plus and OH minus ions, it has equal numbers of H plus and OH minus, so it is not acidic or alkaline. And alkalis have more OH minus ions than water. A move of one pH, so going from uh, pH 2 to pH 1, means that you're becoming 10 times more acidic because this is a logarithmic scale. Going from pH 13 to pH 14 means that you're becoming 10 times more alkaline. There are certain acids that you need to learn uh, the formula for. So hydrochloric acid is very simple, it's HCl. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Nitric acid is HNO3 and phosphoric acid is H3PO4. You can find the group ions sulfate, nitrate and phosphate on page 8 of your data book where you'll find that it's SO4 2 minus, NO3 minus and PO4 3 minus. You notice then that the number of H's that's attached is enough to balance the charge on the group ion. Bases are substances which neutralise acids. Alkalis are soluble bases. So things that can neutralise acids are carbonates, which tend to be insoluble metal oxides, metal hydroxides, which are usually soluble and thus alkalis. All of these can neutralise acids. During a neutralisation reaction, water and salt are always produced. For metal carbonates, we also produce carbon dioxide. You are required to be able to name the salts produced when neutralisation reactions occur. When you're naming a salt, the first part of the salt's name is always the name of the metal that was part of the base. The acid you need to take and change. Hydrochloric acid produces chloride salts. Sulfuric acid produces sulfate salts. Nitric acid produces nitrate salts. And phosphoric acid produces phosphate salts. An acid such as ethanoic acid can produce ethanoate salts. Here we're going to have a go at naming the salts that are produced in all of these reactions. So for this first reaction, we have hydrochloric acid plus sodium oxide. So the start of the name will come from the base, sodium, and the end of the name comes from the acid, which was hydrochloric acid. So we produce sodium chloride, which is just table salt. You will also produce water. 
let's try the next example. We have magnesium hydroxide. So the metal part of the salt's name will be magnesium. And the non-metal part from the acid, uh, nitric, is going to become nitrate. In our final example here, we're using a carbonate. Now one of the advantages of using a carbonate for your neutralisation is that because copper carbonate is insoluble, you will know when the reaction has finished because it will stop giving off carbon dioxide gas and it will also, there'll be no more copper carbonate will react so you'll see it sitting on the bottom of the beaker. So the start of our salt will be copper and the end of our salt will be sulphate. And in this reaction, you will get water and carbon dioxide produced also. Pause the video now and try to name the missing chemicals for each of these reactions. In the first reaction, we are trying to name the salt that's produced. So we have uh, lithium hydroxide as our base. So we'll have lithium. And we have sulfuric acid. So that will give us sulfate and we always get water produced. In the next reaction, we can see that we have calcium nitrate and that's came from calcium oxide. So the nitrate gives us an indication of what acid we used. So we would have used nitric acid and we are also missing the water here. And in the final reaction, we have sodium chloride, which gives us an indication of what we should have as our base. So it's going to begin with sodium. We've also given off carbon dioxide, which means that we must have had a carbonate. So we've got sodium carbonate, and then we're also missing our water as a product. We're going to look now at weak and strong acids. In terms of acids and bases, the words weak and strong have nothing to do with concentration. The words we use for varying concentration are concentrated or dilute, and that tells you if you have dissolved a lot of substance in water or not very much substance. Weak and strong is to do with how much they dissociate when they go into solution. Strong acids and bases fully dissociate into ions. Okay, an example of this would be nitric acid, which we know is HNO3. When you dissolve that in water, that fully splits up into H plus and nitrate ions. Weak acids and bases only partially dissociate. Into ions in solution. An example would be vinegar or ethanoic acid, This is where we need to use the double-headed arrow, as this is a reversible reaction, and this splits up partly into H plus and ethanoate ions. So most of the acid stays joined together like this, and only a small amount of molecules split up into H plus and CH3COO minus ions. This means that strong acids and weak acids have different properties. We can try and represent what these words mean using this grid here. So strong acids that are concentrated will have lots of H plus and A minus, which is just the counter ions. So we're going to have a lot of these in solution and we'll have equal numbers of each. If we have a dilute solution, we don't really have very many in the solution. For a weak acid, if it's concentrated, we're going to have a few of these split up, but we're still going to have lots of molecules and you can see we've got lots of things in solution, but not very many split up. If we have a dilute weak acid, 
we don't have many of either. We're looking at strong and weak acids that have the same concentration, so if we imagine they are both 0.1 molar, so the strong acid's pH is going to be lower than the weak acid. So both below 7, but this is going to be much lower below 7 than the weak acid. Reaction with marble chips and with metal for a strong acid, it's going to react faster because it has more H plus ions in solution, whereas this one is going to react slower. For conduction, this will conduct more because it has more ions to carry a current than the weak acid. And for neutralisation, they both require the same volume of alkali. As you react the H plus ions from the weak acid with an alkali, you force more of the molecules to dissociate and produce more H plus ions. So you will need the same volume of alkali to neutralise it as you continually break up the acid. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.